Several weeks ago, I did a video about what it was like to be a YouTube creator. I will link to that video below. In that video, I asked people if they had any questions, I'd be glad to answer them. So I've compiled my list of questions and I've done my first q and I had to split it up, it was so many questions. So I've done that first video and I will link to that. I kind of got thrown off track because my mother, Granny, was in the hospital for 19 days. So I'm finally getting back to answer uh, all of your questions about being a content creator. You can probably hear it's thundering. I think the storm is below me though. It's going to go on through Murphy and on up. Hopefully it won't be affecting me. If it is, I may have to run for the house, but I think I'll, think I'll be okay. One of the first questions I'll, I'll answer really didn't have nothing to do with being a content creator, but so many people ask in that other video, the first Q&A, which I will link to, so many people ask if the sweater I had on come from Granny, if Granny made it, my mother, if she crocheted it. She did not, it was a store-bought vest. I actually, one of my friends, Kelly Hambry, used to work with Kelly and love her to death. She gave me two vests. They were just alike, just different colors that were her mother's. Her mother was just getting rid of them. And um, I took both, she brought them to work to see if anybody wanted them. I said, I love them, I'll take both of them. So, and I've been wearing them ever since. And that's probably been a good seven or eight years ago, been a long time, but that's where the vest come from, uh, my dear friend, Kelly. Now on to the creator, uh, being a content creator. One of the questions was, what does 4,000 hours and 1,000 subs mean, subscribers? Because that's how you get monetized. That's why in the video I had said you have to reach that level to get monetized. YouTube has since changed that. I think now it's 3,000 watch hours and 500 subscribers is what you need. So what does that mean? That means over a year period of time that you had 4,000 or 3,000 now, if that's what it is, people that many hours of people watching your videos, you know, that many, uh, cut, all your videos put together equal that many hours of watch time. It could have been, didn't have to be that, you know, 4,000 people watching them. It could be, I don't think they distinguish whether it's one person that just fell in love and watched all your videos, or maybe, you know, several people that fell in love and watched them all. It doesn't have to necessarily be 4,000 different people but you have to equal out that 4,000, or I think now it's 3,000 hours of watch time in a year's time. The subscribers, you can, it, it can be longer than that year, but you have to have that many subscribers. So uh, used to be, like I said, 1,000, now I think it's 500. You have to have that many subscribers before you can be monetized. Now those are the two metrics you have to reach, but then once you reach them, then you have to apply to be in the program. Of course, they're going to look at the kind of videos you know you you have, and um, they're going to make sure that you followed all their community guidelines. You know, as far as the things you're showing. So there's other little steps that they will take to kind of review you after you reach that, and then you apply to be in the uh, YouTube program where you would be monetized. And just to, I think I mentioned this in the last video, but what that means is when you watch YouTube's videos, uh, your own YouTube here, you'll notice the ads in them. So once you become monetized, YouTube splits part of the money, that ad money with you. When I very first started YouTube, if you weren't monetized, you didn't have ads in your videos. But now, even if you're not monetized, they put ads in them, so they're making that money. But once you reach the level of being monetized and you're interested in being monetized, then you can uh, share in that money. And then going right along with that, someone asked, would I have any control over the ads that are shown? Not really. I don't really have uh, any control over that. There are... Um, it's complicated kind of once you get started when you get monetized you actually who's paying you is not it is YouTube but it's through AdSense so AdSense is the corporation or the company or whatever that manages those ads and there is a way in those that you can you can turn off some settings so that maybe you wouldn't have um, I don't know if you, you know you think about sexual uh, uh, type commercials or ads or maybe you know if it was um, oh, I can't even think of anything really what else am I trying to think about like political ads and stuff but but I found that even if you fiddle with those little things it still it just seems like YouTube puts whatever it wants to on there now I will say one thing I learned is that 
um, because that's the scary thing about the internet. They they know what you're doing. You know, everybody, the algorithm knows. Like if, you know, we all tease about how we, we just mentioned that we wanted a pair of such and such shoes and then all of a sudden there's the ad. So a lot of times those ads are really related to your what you've been watching already. So, you know, if you watch political stuff, uh, either side, whatever it is, then you're likely, maybe there's gonna be an ad show up on a YouTube video that's political. If you, uh, you know, you're always um, researching and doing stuff about food or cooking or something like that, then probably those ads are gonna be related to that somehow because they are targeting you. That's what they're doing because they're looking at the things that, that you, you look at, the things that you're interested in, if that makes sense but I don't have very much control is really the answer to that question. Do I make an advanced plan for videos? Well, I try to, but things like, you know, granny being sick for so many days gets in the way. In my mind, I think about things that are, you know, I know summer we're gonna do a lot of gardening videos. I know because of that, I'll be putting up a lot of the food we grow. I'll probably do some videos with putting up food. When my cookbook come out, I knew I wanted to share all the recipes in it. I'm slowly doing that. So there's some things like that. But sometimes I, it just something comes up and I decide I want to talk about it. Or maybe all of a sudden we decide to go somewhere and then I think this would be, people would be interested in this. This would be a good video. So I guess a little, little bit of both. Um, I learned a long time ago on my blog, Blind Pig and the Acorn, I've been doing it since 2008, so a long time, and it is a daily blog. Really, the only time I've ever, in the beginning it wasn't daily, but then I quickly got to a point it was daily. And then since then, there's rarely been a day that I, I did not post something until Granny being sick this time. And uh, I, I've thought about why before when pap would be sick i would still somehow manage to post and this time i just didn't i don't know if it's because i'm older and i'm tireder and i just couldn't do it i just couldn't face it uh, granny was really really sick though and a, a few days it was kind of touch and go you know whether or not she would pull through or not so of course i wasn't worrying about the blog anyway to say all that i learned early on if i was going to post every day i needed to have some things that just made it easier for my brain to think about so like every sunday i share music my family's very musical so there's always picking and grinning in the kitchen uh, spot on sunday it's a video of music i usually on mondays try to share food some kind of food related post and uh, then once a month i do a vocabulary test so in other words i had some just standard stuff that i always did and that gave me something that i didn't really have to think about now lots of times i'm struck by inspiration and i want to write about something you know really passionate about it but if you have some some things that are just you know like here on this channel i, I do talk about vocabulary so again i'm that's one of the tried and true. I'm always gonna have my big book out, as we call it, the big dictionary and read out of it. So there's some things like that that, uh, that will always be, be there, but there's others that I just am flying by the seat of my pants, I guess. I don't know if that really answered that. I guess it's complicated as a way to answer that. Another, talking about the blog, someone asked how I started the blog. Well, back in, I'll just tell in a nutshell, I've talked about this in different videos, so I don't want to go really in depth, but in a nutshell, I was going through a really uh, rough patch of life. I met a friend who told me about blogs, and then I decided I wanted, you know, I could do that too. I could talk about, I've always been really passionate about the culture and heritage of Appalachia, about my family, about music and food, and so I thought I could do that too, and that's kind of how it started. And then they said, is it free? It is free, totally free. If you wanna go and subscribe to the Blind Pig and the Acorn, it's free. It just means that every day you'll get your daily dose of Appalachia in your inbox. And then how to start one. Well, uh, back in those days, there was, there was basically just two, mostly two platforms that people used was TypePad, which I think no longer exists, and that's what I used, and then Blogger, which is a Google uh, um, product, I guess, if you will. And at that time, Blogger was free, so I'm not sure it still exists. Some of you may know a quick Google, though, would tell you, but if it does still exist, that would be a really easy way to try and see if you liked blogging or not. Um, I think there is a free WordPress, WordPress, that's the most popular one today, WordPress. There's lots of different ones though, so you'd really just need to dig and dig in and research and see which platform that you wanted to 
uh, use if you were going to become a blogger, but WordPress is what I use today. I use a paid version though of WordPress. I think there's a free one. If you go with those free ones, the things you've got to worry about uh, with blogging, if you're going to be in it for the long haul like I am, you want to make sure all that's safe, all your stuff. Think of it as all your files, all your writing, all your pictures, that it's all safe. So you have to have hosting. You have to have a place to store it all. And some places like WordPress and, you know, there's host, that's a whole other story. And you'd have to decide what you think's best and, and what you don't think's best. You know, a lot of research goes into that. But um, I think there's a paid version of WordPress that has hosting. I might be wrong about that, but I do not. My hosting is not with WordPress. It's with someone else so that I have it, have it separated that way. But, but my advice for bloggers, if you wanted to start out blogging, to find, would be to find one of those free versions and just see because you might find out you don't like it at all like you thought you did and, and you wouldn't have wanted to spend money. But if you find out you love it, then you can go with one of the paid routes and definitely find some hosting so you're able to to keep all of your files if the internet goes crazy and you know you lose it all and it's gone uh, that would be really bad so i would just do a lot of research but start with one of the free ones just to see if it's something that you do enjoy or that you do not enjoy have we ever filmed a video and the camera didn't work yes we've done that absolutely and had to film it again uh, sometimes it's because the camera didn't work, and sometimes it's because um, I just messed it up so bad. I'm watching it back and thinking, this is just such a disaster. I'm just going to do the whole thing over. Uh, it's, I didn't say what I wanted to say, or I didn't say it clearly, or I, I wasn't, you know, paying it. I don't know, just that I wasn't pleased with it. So sometimes that happens. And... Um, along with those camera things that can kind of go wrong. I've had videos where the sound was bad. I struggled with microphones in the beginning. Um, another thing that can happen is it, during the editing process, sometimes can, something can happen. So way back when I first started, I didn't have high speed internet. So I would do a video and then I would go to Miss Cindy's house. She did have it and I would upload it from there. So I had went run to her house and upload the video and then come back. And then I, I'm watching the, con you know, I like to be in the comments talking and everything, and people start saying that it's glitching. And I thought, no, it couldn't be. Well, then I go back and watch it myself, and it is. It was the editing process somehow didn't work right. So I had to edit the whole thing again, and then I put, I didn't want to take that one down because so many people had watched it, but then I, I had a non-glitchy version. I'll link to those in case you want to see them. That was one of my day in the life of Appalachia where it's just all different clips. So I'll link to that so you can see, uh, see what I was talking about. So yes, those things do definitely happen. Does our family watch our videos? They do. Uh, maybe not all of them, but there's a lot of family that watches them. I know my brother Steve likes to watch them. Granny and Paul, especially Granny, likes to watch them. Um, I know Matt's daddy and uh, stepmother Janet, they watch them, and other people in Matt's family. So a lot of our family do watch our videos. And then someone had asked me, what about Matt's old co-workers? Co maybe that was uh, someone that, I don't know if they didn't know that he had retired, or maybe they were just curious about when he left work. Uh, they watched them sometimes. I don't think they watched them at all, um, all of them, all the time or anything like that. But they watched them enough to tease Matt at work, so sometimes they would tease him. And this was a good one. Someone said they Googled my name and they saw that I was worth $4 million and did I did YouTube. Is that how I got rich? <laughs> well, I'm not rich. <laughs> that was not true, the $4 million. I did a video uh, several months ago. Me and Corey did uh, like an update video and in it I talked about that. If you Google my name and my net worth, there's all kinds of crazy stuff that comes up. Some of them even that I'm worth as much as $25 million. Some of them, though, I mean, it's, I think it's AI generated because it's, it, you know, it's, if you read it, the text doesn't quite make sense. A lot of them can't really, don't really know if I'm a man or a woman. They think I'm really tall. Some of them think I'm really short. It's really interesting and also very scary to read them all because it's just stuff that's not true, you know. And I don't know why me. There's a lot of them out there. So I'm like, why? You know, I can understand it's wrong, terrible, but I can understand that people might make, create an AI thing about somebody famous, you know, but why me? But anyway, that's, that one's just, it's just not true. 
Um, I don't, I'm not a millionaire by, by no means. I'm a long way from that, a long way from that. So that, that's not true, um, which also makes me realize I, I do that too. I Google people sometimes, especially in the past I have, and now I'm like, I don't, I don't know if you Google somebody if what you see about them is true because what you see about me is certainly, certainly not true. So that was an interesting one though. And I'll link to that video where me and Corey talk about it because I really go into detail because um, I don't want people to think like I, you know, me and Matt kind of live a humble, frugal lifestyle and then people's like, oh, well, yeah, it's easy for you. You're worth $25 million. And I'm like, no, it's, it's just not true. Not the four million, not the million, not the 25 million for sure. And, but going right along with that, uh, someone asked, do we run YouTube as a business? Do we pay taxes and that kind of stuff? Absolutely, absolutely we do. We have a, uh, at this point, we have a business celebrating Appalachia is, is our business name and, and we have to pay taxes. We pay taxes like everybody else on what we earn. We have an accountant, wonderful accountant, Josh, that helps us with that and what I do without him. And I probably aggravate him to death asking him about stuff, but we definitely run it as a business and we, we pay taxes and um, just like any other, you know, if you were somebody selling used cars or, or anything like that, it's the same thing. And then I'll quit with this one today. I do have a few more, but I'll save that for another video so I don't wear you out. But are you recognized in public? Sometimes I am, sometimes. Uh, uh, two recent incidents I'll tell you about. One of them, I was just in my local Engel store grocery shopping last Friday and a, a lovely man and uh, his wife come up to me and, and introduced themselves and said that they liked our videos and to th you know thanked me for making them. So that was very, very nice, made my day. Um, and then when Granny was in the hospital, we it, you know, it's a fairly big hospital and it took us a day or two to realize that there was actually places, we knew about the cafeteria, but there was like a Chick-fil-A and a little uh, other type of place inside the hospital. We just hadn't stumbled on it and we finally had. And so one morning me and Steve, my older brother had went to, uh, Paul found it first, but we'd went to get us something for breakfast. Uh, just get a, all I got was a biscuit, but anyway. Uh, so we were standing there kind of in the Chick-fil-A line and Steve was going to ask for something and uh, so he was up there talking to him and I was just kind of standing there looking out in space I'm sure like you know slept uh, sitting up in a chair or in the car or whatever and exhausted and uh, somebody come up to me and said I know I know you and I, I, I thought you too but I thought no way not here and I was like yeah, you do? And he's like, yeah, I watch your videos. We love Matt. That's what he said. Me and my wife love Matt. And I was like, oh, well, he really does know me. Uh, very nice man, though, and told me he'd worked at that hospital for like 28 years. And of course, they were praying for Granny and everything. So that was really neat and really, really interesting to be that far away from home and run into somebody. So uh, sometimes I do get recognized in public, and it's, it's always very... Um, humbling and very uh, fun though to meet people. Last year when I did a lot of the cookbook signings it was so wonderful to meet meet the folks that come out. Uh, Corey got to go to most of them with me. Matt went to, I think he got to go to one, maybe two, and Katie went to one or two, but Corey went to most of them with me and it was just such a joy to meet people. We really, really loved it. So that's all the creator questions I will answer today. If you've got more, you can add them to this video. And uh, like I said, I've got a few more that I'll, I'll be doing in another video. So if you've got questions, I'll just add them to that. I know it's really interesting, or it is even for me, when I before I started YouTube, and it still is, I still watch like creators answering questions about their YouTube life just because it's, you know, it's such a strange thing today that people like me make our living doing what I'm doing, you know, talking me for me, talking about Appalachia, dream come true. God has blessed me so much and I couldn't do it without you. Thank you so much. But it's really fascinating to think about that. And, and it is, you know, I have the same, some of the same questions, especially before I actually started doing this, when I was just thinking about maybe taking that leap and trying, I had all the same questions. So um, I'm always happy to answer them for other people. And I'm always glad when you stop by to help me celebrate Appalachia.